Yo, what's going on, Relay? Welcome back to another episode of this podcast where Tommy Runs and I go behind the scenes of your favorite running influencers. Uh, and this week, we have one of our favorite running influencers. I don't know if she's comfortable with that title, but we will call her that for now and ask her about it later. Laura Green, if you are familiar with uh, running on the internet, you are already familiar with Laura Green and her work. She's one of the funniest people that I know. I'm really happy to talk to her. Laura, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you hey, for Laura. having me. I think I think the name was it that you just called it this podcast. This podcast. All right. This podcast. Well, we were just talking <laughs> offline uh, about how this podcast still doesn't have a name. And my trick was, you know, I I. I I guess since we're going behind the scenes, we'll go behind the scenes. My my plan was to just pretend that I already have a name or that we already have a name for it and that I already mentioned it and everyone knows it and just go past the name and into like the what this is. So that's kind of what I did. Hopefully none of you guys noticed that, you know. But then I, I pointed it out. Sorry, then Mike. Tommy pointed it out. You know, you broke the fourth <laughs> wall, Tommy. <laughs> it took us Well, that's the whole point. We got to break so. down that fourth wall. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It took us uh <laughs> 45 seconds to get there so. <laughs> to just take this off the rails All exactly right. yeah tommy how are you doing i'm doing great man i'm just really excited thank you laura for being on this on this show on this podcast um and i'm really excited to talk to you because I, I feel like we talked first like i met you in through my podcast and you like blew like you were blowing up at the time and then you just like skyrocketed <laughs> after like october or september of last year yeah i'd say that like I feel like around the new year was kind of like established a, a kind of continued. I don't know. And then I've plateaued. I've I've plateaued. I may have even declined. I don't know. Okay. Well, look, <laughs> um, can you do you keep track of your numbers? Like, where are you on Instagram and any other like social medias? Can we just go over those real quick? I, yeah, Instagram. I'm uh, hanging out around 140. Um, I've been there for like a month. So, like I said, plateaued uh, a good amount, but um, all good. Uh, YouTube, I haven't logged in in like three months. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm a little behind there. I think I have like a thousand followers, maybe. Okay. Oh, you're crushing um, it there. Yeah, I mean, I feel pretty good about that. I'm just waiting for my residual text on YouTube. <laughs> and TikTok, I am so close to hitting 10,000, which is like peanuts on TikTok, but I, for some reason I, I want to hit that 10 K. I don't know. It will make me feel better about myself. So yeah, obviously Instagram is, is where I, yeah. are you actively primarily. trying to grow on TikTok? No, okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean the correct answer for the brands listening is yes, <laughs> because the brands really love TikTok. Um, but now I, I just post whatever I post on Instagram. So, I understand that's likely why I don't, I mean, I don't take the exact video. I obviously like organically post it from TikTok, but, um, someone recently said like, you can, this may have actually been from you, Mike, like you can tell what each platform can tell who you made that video for. So like YouTube, it's specifically for YouTube and you can tell like the viewer can tell. And I think that kind of happens to TikTok. Like my, my reels, are specifically made for Instagram. And so when I put them on TikTok, they just, they sometimes do pretty well, but for the most part, they, they fall flat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know that I've said that, but I definitely agree, agree with that. Mm -hmm. Um, like every platform has its own language and like culture and norms and stuff. Right. Um, what do you, how do you see like the Instagram running audience versus the TikTok running audience? I can't really speak to it because I don't engage much with TikTok. Like even if people put on comments, I don't know why it frightens me more. I maybe it's because Instagram it's it's probably more my age demographic. Um although that's like a huge general statement that probably isn't even true anymore. But yeah, I don't know. I think that Instagram like when people put like angry comments or whatever you can kind of follow their profile even if it's even if it's like a fake profile whereas tiktok there's like a million people who are like user 10782 and so i don't know i just don't even go into the comments because they frighten me <laughs> um but i i'm assuming it's pretty similar just younger on tiktok i don't know what do you think mike do you think that yeah. like tiktok is younger 
Like, I mean, I think that like that's the statement. And so whenever my like daughter has her phone in her hand, it's like I'm just like that dad. Like, oh, how's TikTok going? You know, like, but she could like literally be on YouTube or like, you know. But then look you look up. at Erin Azar and she has nearly a million followers on TikTok. And are her videos different from each one? Like to no, she posts the same thing on Instagram and TikTok, and it usually crushes on TikTok, and they crush on Instagram too. But it's like so she has figured something out that I have not i don't know yeah i think that like my take is that like the runner on instagram and i think laura you and i've had a conversation about this it's like the runner on instagram it wants something a little bit more composed and maybe a little bit more aspirational a lot of the times too which also i think is your strength because a lot of times you come in and you're like subverting that and you're like kind of playing a counterpoint to that not that you're reels are not composed but that you're kind of like um intentionally kind of like doing a judo flip on the expectation to create a fun delight in a lot of mm-hmm. your in a lot of your reels but i think that's kind of like some of the expectation on instagram and i feel like on tiktok people want something that's more like intimate in a way not like unfinished and not like produced but like something that is more feels more personal so like take a look at like two people that i think are big on instagram on tiktok for running is aaron azar and matt troy um and i feel like both of them have very different like angles and perspectives on the running community but both of their content is very like like i guess close is like a, a word i'll use for lack of a better way to explain it i feel like you know, with Aaron, you're getting a very unfiltered, even though it's very like scripted in, in a lot of ways, her stuff. Um, like she's definitely thought about how she's putting this video together, uh, but, and it's still very real and not that she's faking it, but like, it feels very much like you're on a run with her, you know? Um, yeah. That handheld. Yeah. I, t- typically I'm like, oh, I bet this video will do well on TikTok because it was just shot on my iPhone. Mm-hmm. If it's shot on an iPhone, it will do better. If it's shot on my Sony, yeah. Instagram will do better. It just yeah. looks too polished for TikTok, and mm-hmm. they want to feel like you. That that's I agree with you totally on that. It's like they just want you filming something in selfie mode in 30 seconds and posting it immediately. <laughs> yeah, no. and that's what the viewer is looking for. But even then, like I think some of Erin's best stuff is when she's like talking about like when it's like a supercut of her like crying and vomiting while she's like running but it's all still in like selfie mode or very close and i feel like that intimate you know so it's not necessarily just like oh we want you to just do stuff off the cuff at tiktok i still think that on tiktok like the composed stuff like stuff where you're grabbing footage from like over the course of a year to make a like a super cut I think that still does really well on TikTok. Those are my favorite TikToks to watch too, but maybe it's because I'm more of an Instagram guy. But I think it's just that the intimacy that like this is what people want. I maybe, Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's my take on it. But I also don't understand TikTok, so. (laughs) Do you feel like, uh, because I feel like on TikTok, not not saying this like in a bad way, but I feel like a lot of the content doesn't necessarily have to have like a reason or like a like a a message necessarily, like and I feel like the more you structure a message for TikTok, it doesn't do well. Yeah, like, it's like definitely. When you oh you're making this for this reason, never mind. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. feel like it's like the ones that are just like for like for Aaron stuff. I feel like sometimes you'll just watch a video and you there's no like oh I take away you know some great thing from this. It's just like I enjoyed being on the run with her and that's it. Like there's no yeah. messaging really behind it. There's no like epiphany anywhere. It's just like good, fun, quick content, you know? Yeah. And I feel like every time I put something on TikTok that I think like it's gonna do well, <laughs> it's like a shorter version <laughs> of what I had on Instagram with the same dumb message that I had. And it's like they, people see right through it. Like, no, you tried too hard, bro. Move on. Yeah, yeah. I think Instagram, I think maybe because also when it started, and the first 10 years of it were basically us just showing off our lives. And it still does that, but now people are trying to have more of a message behind it. So we still continue to do that. Mm-hmm. Whereas on TikTok, people are like, I could not care less about your life. Like, don't give me a highlight reel of your of your trip to Greece. Like, yeah. I want, at least, okay, so I don't follow a ton of run influencers, especially on TikTok. Like, my TikTok is stand-up comedy, um, physical comedy so like a lot of like reels where people like fall into to pools and stuff oh, God. <laughs> like, so good. like so it's good. just straight comedy though it's not 
running. So I actually am, I'm not a good person to talk to about this because I actually don't know what's out there. I should, I should be studying and then replicating, but I'm not. I, so, I so know. your, your comedic influences are stand up and slapstick. Is it? <laughs> yeah, a nice little combo. I mean, I would have guessed that. Like, if I had to guess, you know, like, I'd have been like, you know what? This has definitely got some slapstick to it. You know, like, if yeah, if you were just a little more daring, I think then eventually we'll start seeing Laura do, like, some real, like, dangerous, like, falls, you know, maybe yeah. some jackass type stuff, you know, in oh running. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't go on TikTok often, maybe once a week. And when I do, I get sucked in, as it does. It just oh sucks you in. And, like, last week was all of the, <laughs> the people doing skits, holding a folding chair because oh, yeah. of the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they yeah. were so funny. People people, people are, are so funny. Like that's, People are geniuses. People are so funny. And I think that's what TikTok has highlighted to me more than anything else. People are naturally funny and just give them a phone and they will make up a comedic skit that's 10,000 times better than mine and I just like I just sit there and I giggle my husband watches me and I, as they scroll from one to the next and it sucks me in and then I'm like okay I have to like delete the app for a week or else I'll not get anything work done um you know yeah, I think I don't the, find that on Instagram as much no I think yeah I think on Instagram like if you just talk about like the chair comedy, I feel like the the chair, the folding chair thing on TikTok was funnier, faster, but then like less like realistic looking. Like it didn't have to be like a full right. reenactment. It was just funny, quick stuff. Like with the chair like flying in from the sky, <laughs> oh you know. God. It was just like it was like perfect for that. Um, and I just don't think that I have like the gene for like for TikTok really. Like so, I just like so you got to be away. fast, right? Like that yeah. someone. Yeah, that that event happened on one day. You have to have that video out by the next day, or else it's completely ir completely irrelevant. So it's yeah. like that's why TikTok. You have to be moving fast. You yeah. got to be moving with whatever the news story is of the day or whatever. So yeah, agreed. I'm a little too slow, but I think though that like the thing though I don't like about TikTok is that it kind of encourages that you don't follow people because like. TikTok isn't about the people that are making the content. It's about like the content, mm -hmm. you know, and like it's about the app itself, right? The app is interesting. The people that and you what, find on was, TikTok takes off. Are, yeah. are harder to kind of like grab onto and gravitate towards. Um, so like, I don't even know if I follow people on TikTok because I never look at my, I just go on the For You page. Although I deleted yeah. TikTok a long time ago. So I'm saying about what I did like eight, You're 10 out. months ago. <laughs> Eight, I, ten months ago. Yeah, I just have stopped looking at it. I gave up. I'm like, I'm too old. I can't figure it out. I don't. Man, I don't. I, I mean, no. I think I think that the age thing is changing quite a bit too, because brands are like Laura said, like brands love TikTok, like, mm -hmm. and I don't think that their goal is to necessarily sell to a 16 year old either. You know, like, I think everything's kind of moving in that way, and I don't know how long it'll stay there. But I mean, there's a lot going on over there, and I think it's changing a little bit and leaning a little more towards Instagram ish because know. so many Instagram <laughs> folks are going over, but I don't know if we'll never be like those, like those people that have like, you know, 20 billion followers on TikTok because like they get, they get it. They started day one mm -hmm. and they're amazing. There's no know? catching up. That's, there's I know no that that's up. a defeatist mindset, but there's just, there's simply no catching up at this point. <laughs> well, for no catching up. So like you, you, at one point last year, you mm -hmm. had easily 100,000 less followers than you do right now. Um, did you ever think that you're like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have 100,000 followers? No, no. I feel like I, th I think I should like get a couple things straight here. I don't think that I am that funny, like at all. And sometimes I look at my skits and I'm like, I wouldn't follow me. <laughs> It's that guy. That's the honest truth. So like when I, when I am like, Oh, when pe people are like, Oh, did you see this coming? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, but I just keep doing it because it is fun to make. And some of them I think are funny. Oftentimes the one that I, the ones that I think are the funniest do the worst. And that's just kind of, I think how it goes. Yeah. Um, but no, I never saw this coming. I also never even saw this as a career option or even as something that I thought I would want to do. And I think I'm talking to two men who had different careers. Still, Tommy, you still do. Like, like we're like, you don't kind of like enter this world as like, I am going to be a content creator. Um, 
it's something that has fallen into, especially the millennials, the elder millennials of the world. Like that, I think that's especially true for us because this kind of just started when we were in our twenties and thirties and forties. And so for us to just kind of like start in one specific career and shift over, um, people are like, what are your goals? I, I don't have any goals, zero goals, but then I can get let down. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good approach. No, I, I, I also, I feel like I have not met anyone that's been like, how did, like, you know, you meet people and you're like, how did you get into this? And you know there's going to be a story, and it usually starts with a, well, you know, because like it, it's it's windy, it's a windy road, and mm. like you know, it's interesting because I hear people that are like, oh, kids today, they don't want to be astronauts and firefighters anymore, they want to be YouTubers, and I'm like, how long is it going to take for when I'm like, oh, hey, how are you? How'd you get into this? They'll be like, oh, I've wanted to be a YouTuber since I was seven. You know, like I've not yeah. met a person like that yet before. Um, so yeah, it is, it is always an interesting story of how people kind of get here. It is. Yeah. It is interesting to kind of like, that will be the next generation though. Yeah. I think that's what Gen Zers are. They started I, YouTube channels when they were 10 and now they're in their early twenties and absolutely crushing it and living in multi-million dollar homes. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think that they, I think you're right. I think that there's like for YouTube mainly in like Instagram, mm -hmm. I think that the people who are like really big now, I mean, there's obviously some kids in there because they just like caught like this thing and they do something amazing and then they just blow up. Um, but I feel like there's going to be more and more kids that like you, you meet that are 15 or whatever that have like huge like TikTok followings. And they're like they they knew for a long time ago that they wanted to do this. Um, it was, my son has a TikTok page, and he got <laughs> so he was doing so well. And then he um, it asked him what his age was one day, and he just wasn't thinking. And then like put it? his age in, and it deleted his whole page because he was twelve. Oh, buddy. And so like what? he had he had a, he had gotten all these, like bunch of followers. Um, it was like some weird number on TikTok too. So I was kind of like giving him some shade because like I just didn't understand what he was doing. And like, how are you? How are you getting? He had eighty five thousand views on a on a video he made the other day, and he had to take it down because he forgot to like blur out his uh, email address all the way. And so he was getting like <laughs> all these messages to his to his to his uh, his uh, email. And I'm like, you gotta take it down, bro. But like. He's so, I don't, if he met somebody that's in his school that's like, I'm gonna grow up and I'm gonna be a TikToker, or I am a TikToker and I'm gonna get better at it. Like, I think that that's, that his generation is definitely, I've, he's never said I wanna be an astronaut, you know? <laughs> it's like, he wants to ride dirt bikes um, and make you, and make TikTok With videos. With the GoPro on, yeah. Make, yeah. And make TikTok videos, you know? Yeah, and you can't blame them because there is money there and you don't need an education to do it. But what's unfortunate is you look at the people in our generation who have either gone to school and then had multiple careers or whatever jobs and top of jobs, like those skills that we've gained and those jobs have only made us better at what we're doing for content right now. So I don't know, it's tough. Like, of course there are people who are just gonna skip ahead and crush it, but it's kind of like being an actor in Hollywood. Like the chances of it being successful yeah. are so slim. Yeah. So, yep. I mean, yeah. I think though that makes it kind of like ripe for the expansion of all those kind of like the, the parallel cottage industry around like kind of acting. So like agents, managers, like um, agencies that represent many people rather than maybe just a single agent and that kind of thing like that really doesn't exist all that well because like you know very few youtubers are going to be able to go to like a hollywood agency and be like i want you guys to represent me and they're mm -hmm. you're not even i mean you're not even going to get the contact to be able to send that email you know so it's like because they, they just don't care you know someone that's big in youtube is like tiny compared to what they represent you know, in Hollywood, but I feel like as this kind of like industry grows and matures, I think maybe that'll be something that kind of like happens, you know, like in, in the future, but I don't know. I'm not sure where it's going. So do either of you guys have an agent? I do. Not. I do. Who's your agent, Tommy? <laughs> it's just me, man. Yeah. I yeah, was like, I don't, I was like Wait, I, you don't have an agent. I feel like we've talked so many times and I was like, I would know. Yeah, no, no, agent. I don't have an agent. Do you, so I, I, 
I don't know if I want an agent. I'd rather someone that could help me not be so hectic. That's all. I mean, maybe like a, a per like an. I don't still want to say assistant, but sometimes like there's so much like the way that I work is so. Like, you know, Mike, it's kind of like everywhere a little bit, like kind of all over the place. And I would love to like have someone help me like not be so hectic and it would allow me like focus a little bit more. But like, so like Laura, like when I see, and you Mike too, it's like, but your, 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 your content to me looks so, um, like so well put together and like thought out beforehand. And I don't think that like everybody has that. So like, I guess what would be your advice for people that are making content, both of you, making content and like how to make it like, I don't really know what I'm asking, but you, you, you guys ele content is so elevated, not just because of the cameras, but something in the content just makes it so good, so clean. What's your advice for like making good content? Laura, right, you can go. Okay. Well, for me, I, I would say like two opposite things. One is, um, know what you're looking for when you go to it. Like if you're doing an event or you're filming a run or whatever it is, like know what you want to film. So that way you know what not to film. Cause there's going to be so much that you could possibly be filming that you could spend the entire time at an event or whatever it is that you're doing, just filming a bunch of stuff. And you might have a whole hard drive full of video, but it's not going to be all that good or it won't make sense together. So like have an idea of like, what you're trying to ultimately going to make. Um, cause the best thing that it does is it tells you when you can just like turn the camera off and you don't have to worry. Cause it's, you know, it's, it's an endurance event and just like, you can't be on all the time. Um, and I guess the opposite thing to say of that at the same time, though, like be ready to just be like, Oh, I got here and it's a completely different situation than I was expecting. And so I got to be able to pivot and I might not know exactly what I need to get, but there's a lot of stuff happening. So I might need to film kind of a lot of stuff and kind of figuring that out, I think is something that'll just take experience. But like, those are two kind of things that I've realized that I need to spend time, like before I go somewhere thinking about how am I going to prepare for both of those scenarios? So that's what I guess what I would say. Yeah, for me, I would say um, the biggest thing that I think has helped me kind of gain followers is thinking about who your audience is and trying to get to know who your audience is and figure out what would appeal to them. Um, you can't kind of go, I mean, I know that we're all in the run space, so that's easy, but there are people who are kind of in all these different spaces and I think it could be like a little chaotic. Um, I have a specific goal in my mind of like where I want my content to go and it's how I pitch myself to brands and, and on projects that like I really, really want to work on and it would be a dream for me and how it would kind of essentially help them sell shoes because that's all they care about. So it's like, how do we meet in the middle here? Um, so for me, it's like, what's my goal, but then also what's the goal of the viewer and how, what will get them to engage for me? The number one thing has always been, how can I get the most comments? And that's not just like asking a question from your caption. Like I actually don't do that that often. It's more like get people to want to come, like make the video so good that you want, that people want to comment on it. Even if it's just a, a laughing emoji, um, because every single comment to me elevates the content so much and makes it more valuable. Um, as opposed to even as opposed to views, like I would rather get lower views and get a few hundred comments. That to me is such a win. And I don't actually know if a brand would agree with that, but I think it shows engagement from who, who I am and how I interact with the people who come to my channel or page. So like, I don't actual, know. yeah, like actual engagement, you know, cause like you yeah. do see, like you do see people with really big numbers, but then there's just, um, that, which is great. But then there's sometimes there's just not much going on. Like there's people just watching it and liking it or watching it and moving on. But it feels like you like, you have a, a, th a thought to create community within what mm -hmm. you, what you're doing. Yeah. Which is really interesting because you, you're much more likely to sell a product to someone who feels like they can trust you. So you need to gain their trust, which is already a very strange concept. Um, you're, you're trying to create these parasocial relationships 
through the internet, but also I, um, I'm in a particular position where I have pretty strong boundaries into what I share. So I don't give a ton of information about my personal life. I don't give a ton of information about my family or my friends. Even I don't really put my friends on my page. Like I basically am just like a solo act here, but there's been many articles and studies that like you need to share more. If you share more, people will feel like they know you better and then they will trust you more and then they will buy your things. And I, I, but because I have these strong boundaries to kind of keeping that life separate and keeping this, my work job, um, I feel really, uh, I'm pretty lucky in that like my community still shows up and like engages with my stuff, even though I've, probably kept them at like an arm's length from me I think I, but I, I think you're different than I think you're much different than like what maybe that advice would be for um you know because like if you if you take like take me for example like if I didn't show anything except for like my runs it made it seem like I was only doing all this by myself then it would just be kind of weird like you're obviously keeping something from us but you you're creating you're creating like content you're creating like a separate world from the yourself you're not like you're not running around as you every day i mean you are but you're, you're you're doing skits you're doing like performances that that wouldn't necessarily require you to say oh hey here's my kid you know what i mean right. you're, you're creating a separate like world for yourself that isn't like here's me here's my day at the gym and then it's like wow this person like literally has 140,000 followers in it is apparently a cat lady because without cats because she doesn't show the cats or the family. You know, like you're not. It doesn't feel like you're hiding anything. It just feels like you're 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 a performer. You're like you're making good just content characters. around running. Yeah, and and, and yeah. I think that that's different for you. But then when I look into the camera and I say, "Hey, I love to drink scratch. Like, why should you believe me?" So there has to be some type of interaction that's not just like this character. There have been so many recent articles about it. I forget. I forget which YouTube star kind of like went off about it. And so it's kind of ignited this flame, but I do find it really interesting because it's this, um, understanding that like the influencer has to break down this wall in order to feel connected to their community so that they can essentially sell something. But if the consumer, if the person who is on the other end then dishes it back to the influencer. It's very common for the influencer. I have thought this and said it myself to say, you don't know me. Wait a second. You don't know me at all. You don't know anything about my life. You don't know my, about my family. Like, who are you to judge me? But it's, but the argument is, well, it's because you've invited me in. So, so like, well, why did you tell me to trust you to drink that scratch? <laughs> you know, it's like, it has to be two ways. So it's, um, it's been this kind of interesting conversation in my mind the last few weeks of being like, are these boundaries or is this me saying no to negative feedback? Cause I'm scared of it, you know, because I'm scared of, of trolls and whatever it is. So I don't know. It's like interesting food for thought because how can you just say, no, you don't know me. You don't know me at all. Like for celebrities to be like, get off me. Like, like you can't say anything negative about me because you don't know me, but, but you just brought me into your bathroom and said, get ready with me and told me which sunscreen to put on. And I watched you get ready for a run and I watched you choose your shoes and it felt like I was inside of your house. So then for you to say, you don't know me, it's like, don't judge me. It's like, wait a second. So I get it. I get it actually a lot more clearly than I think I used to. Yeah. I think that the boundaries thing is hard. Um, but I think it's really important to set them, you know, yeah. and like for me, you know, I, I kind of switched because I started out making like family vlog yeah. videos and then it pivoted to running content. And since oh, then, I didn't know that. Yeah. And since then, there is some good videos out there, yeah, Laura. There's, <laughs> Go there's way still back. there, but like, yeah, um, I, I, I kept them on in the beginning because I was like, well, if I if I remove them, then I'll have like zero views on this channel and I need some I need to have some like lifetime views. But um, right. so they're still there and I just never got rid of them and they're very old now. But like now, like the boundaries that I wanted to set ha has changed as some of my kind of like thoughts on, you know, putting my kids on the Internet and putting my wife in my house and all that stuff on the Internet has changed yeah. like a little bit. And so like I feel like, you know, 
and, and I talk about this with a, you know, I happen to, you do it, you guys all do it too. You, you, you meet athletes and like we kind of cross over in this one space of like we're all posting stuff to the internet and we all run, although they do it on a different level than we do. But I kind of share like, you know, like opening up to your audience doesn't have to mean like you get to see my whole house. You get to see where my address, you get to see everything about me. It just means like share, like what do you feel like sharing and talking about and what comes naturally? You know, and like share that. And then you can fiercely guard the rest of the walls that you want to guard, you know? And so like, I feel like that's kind of like one way where I talk about it, where I'm like, you know, I bring the camera on my vacation, mostly because I want to make home videos, but I bring them and I did go running. And so I'll show some of that, um, but I'm not going to show like, you know, us, the family photo. Like someone was asking like, hey, how come there's no family photos on this account? I'm like, sir, you just watched a reel about a running shoe. You know, so I'm like, yeah. um, it, would be, it would be weird, you know, but I feel like at the same time, you have like this relationship that you're building with people from the mere fact that you're making all these videos. I feel like it, like with human nature, it's almost impossible to not insert a bit of your own humanity into it, you know? Mm -hmm. So like after a while, like in the beginning when I was like, all right, no, like try to, I was like, no personality, just make videos about shoes and make it really informative and doesn't have to like, you know, cut to the chase, be really concise, make the shortest, most powerful video you can and like get out all the personal ramblings. But eventually after a while, you're just like, you know, I just don't like blue shoes, you know? And so that becomes like a meme or I really like black shoes, you know, and that becomes like not a meme, but like a thing that people like understand that this is our, this is our cult micro culture here, you know? And I feel like that's the way that like, those are the things that you know about me and we can talk about those things. But like, you know, then sometimes I think people as viewers may conflate that like level of kind of like, intimacy in this narrow area as mm -hmm. intimacy in the whole kind of conversation and that's when i feel yeah. like sometimes people feel like boundaries get kind of blurred and that's where it can be a little bit surprising for one or the other side i mean i think like the like the big like the highest level like i mean in in a I mean, when you look at people, what people compare like this influencing thing to, like on the highest levels, like the Kardashians, where they show, I mean, they literally show everything. You know, I mean, they're, it's like designed, oh, well, maybe they probably don't even show everything. People think that they show everything, you know? And so it's like this, they're, you're in their house, or like they argue, they get, you know, on the camera, and then they like, they parent on the camera, you know? And it's like, um, not everybody has to, but they're selling, but they're, 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 they're selling their life, you know, like they're selling that thing. And so I don't think that like someone that reviews shoes needs to also sell that as well. Like, you know, don't, you know, show us the, the good and the bad of all the shoe stuff that, you know, like you, what color you don't like of a shoe and all that go deep into that. But that doesn't mean you have to go like, um, you know, today I yelled at my daughter, you know, <laughs> you know, it's like, you don't need to like, you don't have to cover all those bases, you just cover right. the bases like within, within your field, you know, and, and Laura, like when you share, when you, I think you went on vacation a while or something like a little while back and you showed like people and I was like, Oh, this is like, and I'm like, I wonder who that is. Like, <laughs> I'm like, cause it doesn't happen much, you know, like, and I'm like, Oh, cause I, and I, and I know you enough to know that like that probably was a thought like am i gonna post this or not you know and totally. then you posted it and i'm sure people probably loved it because there's people that like are invested in your success and like what you're doing they think you're really funny and they probably even though you don't show a bunch of like who you are behind all that people relate to you because they see themselves like oh i i would think this i act like that too i don't like this brand either or i think this i love this brand but i think that they're funny because you know like you're yeah, doing right. a really great job of going through all the layers of what you're willing to go through that's really funny that about because i also just people are nosy i'm nosy yeah i, I am yeah. one of these people also you know <laughs> so like come on i it's not that i'm like oh how could they why do they want to see photos of my kids so bad? Yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah. no, I get it. Like, you're just curious, you know? Yeah. What does her husband look like? <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> no. Well, like, when, when those photos that Tommy was mentioning, I was like, oh, I was like, are there tags on these other people? Who are these other yeah, people? Like, yeah. I'm like, are they thing. influencers too, or are these normal humans? I was like, oh, no, they're normal humans. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. like, oh, Laura definitely <laughs> paid for the. I'm like, this isn't really her family. She paid them. <laughs> <laughs> she she paid them. Probably the one with my siblings, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then I, 
that was very fun for me because like I'm the middle child and I'm the least cool and I'm like the least funny the whole thing right and so I post that photo and then my siblings got a lot of messages from their friends being like I didn't know your sister was Laura Green because now I have a different last name than they do and it made me very cool (laughs) awesome that's so good yeah it's it's i'm very big on boundaries i'm i'm all i'm all in um i will respect other people's but also like if like i i smashed this ring at crossfit i don't want to talk about it It was so embarrassing at how it happened but basically i like annihilated my ring and i didn't have rings on for like a month and i got a couple dms wondering are is everything okay with you and your husband i'm like I'm like, wow, I don't even know you. Well, how ballsy. Like, <laughs> yeah, were these DMs from people that were like, hey, if, uh, if if like DMs can be open, can I get in there? Or was it like, I'm no, concerned yeah, about it you? It was like concerned. Like, <laughs> it's, it's like concerned. Like, I've been through a divorce too. Oh, it's okay. hard. I'm like, oh, no, oh, it's I mean, good. it's like, it's like nice, but it's like, okay. <laughs> I mean, if I was like, I don't know if I want to talk about it. Like, um, I know, with a stranger it, it, on Instagram. <laughs> So like I, you guys well, are you? Sweet. I don't know. Like the people who follow me really truly are wonderful. So like I, I don't want to like make anyone feel bad, but it just shows too. Like if I see a photo of someone who suddenly doesn't have their ring on, I I'm like, hmm, mm. you know, it's it's human nature. And so I don't I don't make fun of anyone for doing because I do post, it too. <laughs> post one video without a ring, she gets a hundred DMs. Oh no, like two I wish minutes. that would make me feel good. <laughs> hey, <Okay. laughs> um, but you, uh, what one thing too? Like I'd love to ask you guys because you guys are both like you know you guys are superstars. I've walked with Mike. I mean, you are like when it, it like at certain weekends of the year, you guys are superstars for sure. Um, so I've like walked with Mike, and it took us a very long time to get two blocks. Very long time. Um, and I don't even know who was worse, like walking with Kira D'Amato or Mike. So that, that shows you like it's it's tough in Boston with Mike around. Yeah, but definitely. do you talking about like that boundary thing, like how do you deal with like people in person that have followed you for a long time? They know you, you know, they know like what you've what, we, what you we've shared with them all this time. How do you like deal with like that level of um, of like openness that they have with you that is almost it's strange because you may not follow them back and see all the things that they're offering too. So it's hard to like ha- have somebody come to you so open and go like, oh, thank you so much for this and that. Like, how do you handle like the, those uh, those exchanges? I just think it's so flattering. So I I, I I'm always like take a, like taken aback by it because I still don't in any way feel cool or famous or anything but on like you said on those weekends on like Newberry Street Boston Marathon weekend um, I was shocked at how many people recognized me and That's so, so then it became this thing of like oh my god like this is bigger than I even thought it was and then of course it's like a very specific weekend with a very specific group of people so of course like I walk down Newberry most days and nobody knows who I am (laughs) like that's that's my reality it's just those weekends but um yeah I am just so flattered by it it's a lot of people who are just like thank you for making running fun like that's pretty much typically it's not like I'm out here changing lives I'm not out here you know um inspiring people even that much it's more so just like Thanks, thanks for having a good time with it, especially as um, we get older. Like it's like mm. our, you know, like we're entering our forties, and like running feels a little different, and, and just having fun with it. Um, maybe our more competitive days are behind us, at least for me personally. But I'm still enjoying even the competitive side of it. Um, yeah, I just. I think it's the best, and I love when people tell me things about themselves. I'm just like, I don't know honored it's yeah. an honor yeah i have a hard time because um i mean i love it i you know um it's always great when people say hi and i always encourage people to say hi like if they see me randomly um even like not on newberry street or like wherever i am but i have gotten to the point where like i've met people m- many times and they'll say like, "Hey, I saw you. Yeah. I went on the sh- the group run with you in Chicago. It's good to see yeah. you again here in New York." And I just will not remember the person. That's tough. And yeah. I just feel so bad about that. And I don't know like what I can do about it. 
because it's, it's uh, you know it sounds weird to be like because I meet so many people, um, but yeah, like though, but mean, there's a tough. lot of people and I, I don't always have time to like spend with everyone that I meet like even on a, like a group run or shakeout or event like that you know and so that always kind of makes me feel bad that I don't so I I appreciate it when people tell me that they've met me before. Because then it's mm-hmm. a reminder, because then I can at least acknowledge them and say, you know, it's great to see you again. Even if I don't remember seeing them the first time, um, I just, so I, it's kind of like a, not a lie, but it's my way of saying, like, I'm ha- I'm glad that we're meeting a second time, you know, and it's, I just don't know how I can give more in that situation, you know, that that's what, make, that's the thing that always bothers me the most, is that I yeah. don't remember. Things. I mean, I feel like I'm feel like I'm I'm more in the beginning of that for um, you know like there's definitely on like race weekends and stuff like that like you know I I'm mildly noticeable I guess so it's like people that follow me go like yeah that's you for sure um, I don't know what it is um, <laughs> Tommy you're you're the dude that was in that runner's world photo with her name. <laughs> The two of you are so recognizable. I am just like your classic white girl with brown hair. Like I, that's, that's actually why I'm more surprised that people know who I am. I'm like, you actually know what I look like. I, mean, I look like you, everyone else out here. When you said that you were surprised that like so, like people recognized you in in Boston, it was. I mean, it's kind of crazy to say. I mean, you like. You make you make very like your videos are very clear. It's like it's like you're running by the right. You're like right in center. Like this is you. Like this is all your videos start right here. You know. I, yeah, that's true. I know. But then, the only the only distinguishing feature I have is that I'm tall. But people don't realize that I'm tall until they see me in real life. Because there's like yeah. Because no all your characters and all your characters and your skits are the same height. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, so like, I'm in like the beginning of all this. So like when people sit, when people like recognize me or like come talk to me and I am pretty vulnerable about like, you know, alcoholism and, you know, in, in certain things, you know? So I think that sometimes some of the connections that I may make with people through my content, um, is it can be like overwhelming to like, for me to like hear their immediate, their thoughts when they, when they, when they meet me. So it's like. I, and I was like, it's super imposter syndrome too. It's like, I, there's no way that that I could have made this impression on you, you know. And it's just, it it can be tough to like handle that up front. And I know that you guys probably deal with with that in some way. So thanks for your thoughts on that as well. Oh yeah, I'm like the the queen of imposter syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, so uh, another question. Like, what for, am I doing here? <laughs> this is this is this is. I'm just gonna ask you guys both questions. So. um when 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 brands come to you guys because i mean a a lot of people listening to this are probably making content or trying to make content eventually for brands and work with brands do you you all both make very specific types of content um when they when a brand comes to you do you ever feel like it's harder to deliver to them while being true to what you do like do you ever feel like a you know like laura like someone comes to you they know what they're they should know what they're getting you know like it's it's not even like I mean, you're very clear, like, if you watch 10 videos, okay, this is what we're going to get if we hire her. But do you ever feel like a weird uh, energy of, like, maybe I need to do this differently because it's this type of brand? And how do you stay true to, like, your, you know, your, your, your core? Yeah, so my process is if a, a brand contacts me, I usually send them three to five concepts. So... I have them choose or narrow, at least narrow it down so that I can write a script. So I try my best. And there are, on occasion, a few brands have come to me with their concepts, which I love because it gets 50% of the work done already. Um, and it gives me a clear idea of where they're trying to go with it. Mm-hmm. But I usually change it at least a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, and. Usually I make it, I just like turn up the volume a hundred percent because they're pretty tame and they're pretty safe. And I'm like, let's just make it weirder and maybe more physical comedy. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so then I, so then they choose a concept and they're like, we're really into this. I write a script and then they approve the script. And I usually do that. It may sound like more work to people, but 
reshooting to me is the worst because I mean, you have to do it all over again. And in the shoot, um, a lot of times I hire my friend Chris to help do the videography. So like to schedule him again and to go through all that again, to reshoot something. So I make sure that the script is done and that they're all in on my jokes. And then I usually add in a few more jokes cause they just kind of come to you and then they usually edit them out <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> Um, they're the ones paying me. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of the ad work I do is very safe. I mean, all of my my skits are, like, G-rated and pretty yeah. safe. So it's not like I'm doing a ton of controversial work out there. But I usually just – I try and find, a, like, a happy medium between me and where the brands want to sit. And so far, I've had a great time with it. Most people, like you said, know what they're getting themselves into. And so yeah. – they know they know it's gonna be a little out there yeah i think for for me like my approach to it is one of two ways because i kind of get like two kind of like buckets of things when brands come to me one is the kind that i like more where it's a, they're just like here's this product go or yeah. like well here's this place we'll send you and then there's like no real like up there like they are coming to me for me and like they want whatever it is that i think is going to be the interesting story to tell and like that those are always great because that's like the least interaction with anyone and i just make it and i'm like i'm posting it you know and then that's it that's great i love it but that's not always all the stuff um sometimes it's like i'm part of a bigger campaign where they're not coming to me for me they're coming to me because i'm a person that has a following you know and so like those things exist recently i did one with like kodiak um for like there are new like bars and stuff uh that were coming out and so like there are guidelines that come to me and so like you kind of have to operate within the rules of the of whatever like the 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 um promotion is or like whatever the campaign is and so i always try to do like all right within these kind of like four walls you know how mm. can i play and make it the most me that i can um and so then i kind of go back to like what are my core kind of like values as like a influencer um and apply that to whatever the campaign is so like for kodiak i feel like a lot of people would have done like a get ready with me that seems like a pretty easy one you know like here's how i use kodiak bars to keep me fueled throughout the day but like like one of my core things that has always been like my kind of like brand standards if you want to put it in that language is like actual footage Right. And so like me using the thing like as I do it. So like yeah. all my shoe reviews, yeah. like it's not just like me holding the shoe and saying, here's why this shoe's great. It's like I ran in it and you're going to see me run in it and you're going to see the footage. I'm going to splash through the mud or the water or whatever. I'm going to run the reps and you'll see it and then we'll talk about it. And so I kind of applied that to like granola bars, you know, and so it was kind of like a day in the life with me where I was like, I was doing some running, I was doing some filming, I'm eating the food because that's, I live like on I, as much as I shouldn't, I live on like kind of prepackaged food a lot, you know, um, I'm usually just eating something on the way to something else or while I'm running, you know, so like that, that was like the way I fit it in. And so that's kind of like my approach um, to those kinds of like working with the brands in terms of like, how do I deliver me in a way that's ha good for them? You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. also think like coming back to the brand and being like, okay, I, if they have edits to my script or if they have a change in idea, if they want to go a whole different concept, I've got gained a lot of confidence in being like, look at this ad, look at this ad, look at this ad. And like how well that they did for, for an ad, you know, like obviously those videos are going to get fewer views typically because people just don't want to engage with ads as often as regular videos, which of course I understand. So I am doing everything I can for the brand to get people to engage in order to get them more views. And so there's a few that I've done that I'm super proud of because of how much engagement they still got, even though it's very obviously an ad. So I've gotten a lot more confidence in being like, don't worry. Like, you know, like people are like, oh, well, we just want you to do a get ready with me. And, yeah. and I'm like, okay, I'm telling you that that's not going to do well on my page. You'll only get X amount of views. And then you're going to be disappointed. Like, let me just do something weird and people will... <laughs> 
being, <laughs> be into it. Like yeah. I, that's kind of going back to knowing your audience, knowing what people like to engage with and just watching it time and time again. Like I'm constantly experimenting on what I call filler content. So if it's not ads, which I do like maybe two or three ads a month, the rest are just for fun. And they're honestly me either spitting something out to just keep the algorithm fed or it's me experimenting and seeing if people attach on to things like, like, did they like that? Or, um, if I edit something within Instagram reels, cause you know how people, you know how Instagram likes you to use their oh, yeah. features. So I did that the other day. It didn't do any better than any other video. So now I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore because it actually took me three times as long to do. Yeah, I tried that too. And it was just like, I don't know, it's the same as the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Instagram. <laughs> totally. So there, there are things that I'm constantly trying to tweak in order so that when the ad does come around, I'm like, no, okay, this is what we're going to do. And I'm prom I can like guarantee you X amount of views. I can't promise you it will go viral, but I like, it will be, it will be good enough, you know? And so I, and I've just gotten more confident in that at first I'd be like, okay, I'll do whatever you want. And now I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, let me tell you, I know my audience pretty well. So let me, let me help us. <laughs> let yeah. me help yeah. you. Have you ever had to walk away from a project in this kind of negotiation scenario? Or threaten um, it? No, not, not yet. Okay. Um, for the most part, brands are like, okay, okay, cool, cool. Like we'll do with whatever, <laughs> as long as it's not, you know, yeah. um, offensive, but yeah. they're like, we trust you. And so <laughs> that's why like most brands that I've worked with have been incredible with that. Yeah. Um, yeah like, you said something like about had... experiments, yeah. Laura, how, how do you know, what are you gauging if something that you're experimenting with is successful? Like, what are you looking for? Uh, views, of course, likes, I actually really don't care about, but likes usually bump up it, bump the video up in the mm -hmm. algorithm. So like, I don't know, Instagram will like it, but I don't, I don't care as much. Um, and just comments. Like if I feel like people are engaging with it, good or bad, it, it's, it's great, you know? So like shares for num number one, like if anyone's actually still listening to this 50 minutes in and they're just a, someone who likes one of the three of us, um, if you like a creator, share their stuff. It's the oh best God. thing that you can do for them. It's the number one way to get us more eyes on our stuff. Um, it's like, it's the, lo it's the number one love language in social yeah. media <laughs> is to share. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like how I view it. If, if it's a video that I'm like, this should do well, not because it's phenomenally funny, but sometimes, you know, when something's relatable, it will be funny, like, or not funny. It will be, um, successful. If it doesn't do well, I look at kind of, okay, what was it the time of day that I posted? Was it the music that I chose? Did I choose music on Artlist or did I use choose music from Instagram? You know, um, it's, and of course, like, was this just not relatable content? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's that too, okay. or this just sucks. <laughs> there's lots of components. How do you deal with content that you really enjoyed making? that might not be successful along some of those metrics you just identified? Um, yeah, it's like, it's like, oh, that's a bummer because, but it, it can also at this point a year in, I can kind of tell, like, I think people come to my page for some lighthearted, corny, easy watching, running humor. And sometimes, um, when I insert jokes that like I think are super witty or smart or whatever, uh, sarcastic, um, I don't think people are as drawn to them as much, at least on my page. So I've, I've just been like, okay, well, so like I know what people are coming here for. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think it will evolve as everything does. I can only write so many skits about the same stuff over and over again. So uh, I'll have to evolve somehow. Mm. My favorite character of yours is the Martin Joe. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh yeah. He's yeah, my favorite Martin. character the too. Joe is amazing. Yeah, the Martin. Uh, so I'm going to TRE this year. <laughs> okay, great. And I was thinking about 
only showing up as the Morton job. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. I'm I'm all for that. I'd like to interview you or as, interview as him. Morton once, once you get there. <laughs> yeah, I'd love, I'd love to interview you as the Morton Joe. Uh, I've been meaning to bring him back so so many times, and then I'm like. I don't know what has stopped me. Like, I want the Morton gel to go to McDonald's in the drive-thru, you know, like, I, like, <laughs> like so a, asking like for random stuff, like a cappuccino, like, do you have, do you have like, you know, as a <laughs> war, like super high end that's not there. Like, do you have like filet mignon? Like, <laughs> talk, a brand, talk about a brand that will probably won't ever want to work with me yet. I am buying hundreds of dollars worth of their product every month. <laughs> I don't think that that's true. I don't think that that's true though. Like, I, I, don't, I don't, I think mean, they love me. oh, they don't love it. No, but I'll if they have a booth at TRE, I will show up <laughs> dressed as their character. A booth at TRE? The crazy thing oh, is, gosh. the crazy thing is, they might all be dressed like you, so you may just fit right in. <laughs> you should. If that they have a booth, you should just stand there as if you're, you're standing working, in it. Yeah, just if you're working the booth, and <laughs> they escort thinking, you out. <laughs> do you guys know Tony with the Sony? Yeah, yeah, I met Tony in Boston. Oh, he's the best. So Tony. Um, I had, a, I had the idea the other day. He sent me a voice message being like, you should go to each booth dressed up as that character. Oh, so, my goodness. And then, and then like, create content off of that. So It'll be like, we'll Laura, say, you're going to TRE for two and a half days. How many suitcases did you bring? I know. <laughs> <laughs> it, no, it'd really just be one, you know, it'd be one carry-on because you have one outfit the whole time. And then, like, go to, like, all the competitors' uh, booths and just kind of, like, look all weird and, like, scoff at them and walk away. Thought, no, but, oh, if she, oh, but if she was, like, she dressed as Brooks to Brooks and she yeah. dressed oh. as A6 to A6. My God. You know, I think. And, and, like, I had to talk to them. Like, I thought, like, and it's kind of like, how do I expect a shoe to talk to me? But. <laughs> no, like, you are. Brooks, like, you... I mean, the Brooks is, like, you... we are right. Happy. <laughs> I feel like you should just greet the people that come to the booth. Like, yeah, just don't even. Yeah, act like you are. Yeah. You are Brooks. Like you are Asics. Yeah. Like at that moment. Like you, not even like you're a shoot. You are the brand. And yeah, you just stand there and like just expect for people to like know so exactly funny. who you are. And I think I think that Brooks thing. I think you're on the right path with that yeah. one. <laughs> They'll be like, oh, here's the list of people that are barred from coming to TRE. One, Laura <laughs> Green. Two, end of list. <laughs> yeah, one, Laura, like, no, one, Laura Green is the first one, and then Laura Green, Asics, Laura Martin. Green Brooks, Laura Green Martin, Laura <laughs> Green. Like, all the possible Laura Greens that could show up, you guys are all banned. Uh, this is my first and last year going to TRE, that's for oh, you've sure. But you've never been? No. I thought, for some reason, I thought you had been. No, it's my... It's fun. It's be that's a, it's that's the be first place where I met um, Aaron Azar, and she oh, and she yeah. was there, and she was like, "I don't know what I'm doing here." And I'm like, "No one here does. No one here does." Yeah, you just, don't really just just enjoy it. And she's like, "Okay." Especially if you're not if you're not like if you're not Kafuzi or like believe in the run or like Sidious maybe like there's you just kind of there and you're just like I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing right now, you know? Because like everything <laughs> yeah. is kind of designed for like that. For like the three, it's like it's designed for you know media, obviously um, retailers and brands, you know, and then everybody else just can kind of bounce around and like and if you do go with like what Fuzzy said, like if you go with an idea of like what you want to accomplish during that trip, then there, it's definitely there to be had because it's it's everything. It's like it's like a dream. They're all there, right together. I know. Um, I I need to get it together. I I Kofuzi is so good at just getting non-stop footage like i'm someone who is i leave something and i'm like oh, damn it should have taken a photo like, <laughs> let alone got no footage or video oh man i need to get better at that you know i'm terrible at like because i get video like, around a run thing i'm getting video all the time but like mm -hmm. I'll do something with my kids or something and then have nothing to show for it like somebody asked me oh let me see a picture of your kids i'm like you know, and I show them like a this picture, is a from, like, picture three of years the ago. day they were born. Yeah. yeah, this is when I first held my baby girl. <laughs> like, wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, we were in in Boston. I was with Believe in the Run after the race. We're all getting some. I don't know what meal it was. Lunch, dinner. I'm not sure. And Thomas is like, you know, Mike. I've never. We've known each other for how long? I don't know what your wife looks like. Can I see a picture of your wife? And I'm like, Thomas, I'll show you a picture of my wife. And I was just like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one from the winter. 
We were in snowsuits. We had made snowmen at home. That was the most <laughs> reason. Her whole mouth is covered. We, her head is yeah, covered yeah, in yeah, her hat. Is that, is that, is that, yeah, it's just, it's just, just the eyes. goggles yeah, on. Yeah, 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 not know. even her eyes. It's I like, know, her, just like her nose. Uh, this is not a good sign. Uh, we, I got to work <laughs> on this. So, so yeah, then the, next time I saw, the next time I saw him, I was like, Thomas, Thomas, let me show you a picture of my wife. And I like just, like shoved the picture of the of, of the of like the phone in, in front of him. I'm like, we have pictures. We're very it's happy. Like, it's, it's like it's like Kafuzi is like that like that kid in school whose like girlfriend lives in France. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, she's a friend. She's a model. You she's, know? she's Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> She's Canadian, you know. Yeah, she hasn't come over here much. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. All right. Well, before, I mean, we've been going for a long time, and something I wanted to make sure we talked about. So, like, maybe we'll do like a hard turn here, Laura. Okay. Is, you mentioned um, pitching brands um, earlier. What goes into like? Because I know that, like, probably in the beginning, a lot of brands were coming to you, but now you're at the point where you probably still get a lot of that, but you're pitching brands a lot. What goes into a pitch for you? Is that a DM? Hey, I want to do this. Are you interested? Or is it like you're making a you're making like a PowerPoint and you're putting in like anticipated costs? Like, can you break it down? What does a pitch look like for you? Yeah. So I have absolutely no how no idea how other creators do it. So this is like, and I, again, I think it's just because it's the wild west. Like, no one knows what each other is charging. <laughs> no one knows how each other do our pitches. Um, honestly. At the beginning, I was doing more pitches. Now, shoes, most of the big brands come to me when they're releasing a shoe. Just probably the same with you guys. Like, we got the shoe coming out. We need some eyes on it. So can you do a video on it? Um, so that's a little bit easier in a way because they just kind of come rolling. A slow roll. It's not like I'm overwhelmed at any point. It's just like a slow roll of releases. And then I kind of come up with stuff how I talked about earlier. At the beginning... <clears throat> Like at the very beginning, I worked with Brooks a lot, and that part of that had to do one week. I love their brand, but also um, I had a connection through November Project at the beginning, and so um, I sent them like a PowerPoint, like a three-page deck that was just like all of these ideas um, that they and they could like hand pick from, and so they were like, "We have like we like A, B, C, and F," and so that's how I did it at the beginning, and I would write like the title of the concept and then like a couple bullet points underneath of what it would look like. Mm. Um, for uh, events, lately I've been getting a lot better at getting ahead of it. So uh, the if I wanna go somewhere, so I talk about boundaries, I only do one travel trip a month at most and it's just so that I can be home more. And so if there's something that happens in Boston, for me, it doesn't count. Like, that, that doesn't count towards my travel trip. Um, but if it's something that requires me to get on a plane, it's once a month. And so I try to kind of look ahead and be like, what is something I want to go to? New York City Marathon. Okay, who are the key players? Who would want to work with influencers? And what could I do? So for them, like I would reach out to a couple brands and I'm like, I have an idea. Um, I think if you're an early on creator or a, um, influencer or you want to get in the space, speaker, host, my number one piece of advice is to get your plane ticket, get your hotel. Even if you don't even get it, just say you already have it. I'm going to be in New York City for New York City, New York City Marathon weekend. I'm available on Saturday all day and night. I have an idea for for something that we could do together. Do you guys have an idea of what you're gonna be planned for that weekend? I'd love to get on a call. Um, a, it eliminates the travel component, which like brands are just lazy. So it's like, they're like, yeah, great. You're already there. We don't have to deal with your travel. Perfect. Mm. Um, I work that into my cost so that it's covered. Um, I did that for like, so for Orlando, for example, the New York City Marathon, or not New York City, the, um, the Olympic trials for the marathon in Orlando in February, January, February. Um, I already bought my flight and my hotel and now, and then I emailed five brands and I was like, I know you guys will be doing events there. Uh, I have a couple ideas of things that we could do together. Let me know if you wanna jump on a call. And yeah, that's six months away, but that's how far out these brands plan. So, and then you just see if anyone bites. Um, at this point, I feel really lucky that I have contacts at most of the major 
the key players. Um, but there's also a lot of smaller brands um, or brands that are not shoe brands that like to show up at these events too that I love working with. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of just like keeping your mind open and having an idea of what you want to do and also what you do, like how much money would be worth it for you to go to these places. It's for me, it's either I want to really want to go to the event. So like even just breaking even is all good <laughs> or it's a, a nice paycheck that makes me feel good about leaving home and leaving my kids for X amount of days. And um, it was worth it for me. So it has to hit one of the two <laughs> to make it worth it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've gotten just a lot more confident with it and a lot more, um, I, I have an understanding of how these events are built out and what the brands are looking to showcase at the events because now that I've been to a handful of them, I, I can like take a step back and be like, okay, if I were the brand, what would I be wanting to do at this weekend and what's the best way to show up and if I were to use an influencer, how would we want to use them and then putting in my two cents of where I think my strengths are and trying to sell it. How do you figure out numbers? Like you said, for like, charging. Yeah. So like, yeah, you're talking yeah. about like, I, sometimes I want to break even. Can you go a little bit further into that? And then I'll, I can go into how I go into that or don't really go yeah. into it. So, like, don't feel okay. like thinking about it. But yeah. so the first thing is when I first started, I had absolutely no idea, but I also was not afraid to just like cold call people. Okay. <laughs> so do you know Kelly Roberts? Mm -hmm. I've, I've never met her in person, but I know who she is. Okay, so I've known her for a number of years, okay. and she was one of the very first per people I talked to about rates. And she's like, never, like, you know, like, and I'd be like, she'd be like, what are you charging for a reel? And I think at the time it was like 1200 And she's like, Laura. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, like, I just had no idea. And so she's like, you got to triple that. And then oh, okay. you, you also have to go up higher, and then they'll negotiate down. And I was like, terrified of negotiating, yeah, right? Because I'm like, oh, they, I look ungrateful for asking for so much money. And then I talked to a, do a number of different creators who I just slid into their DMs. And I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Would you be able to get on a call and help me out? And half of them did. I mean, people are very much willing to help because what is the saying? Like all, all ships rise. Yeah. Like you got, if, if one person is charging not enough, if they're, if they're have such a low cost, then the rest of us suffer because the brands are going to keep going to the cheap guy. And I didn't want to be the cheap guy. So um, I started raising my prices and then I started working with an agent who also is Aaron's, Aaron Azar's agent. And that was like the clarity that I needed. Somebody in the business who was able to just like price things out. And so if a brand is like the most, the most difficult ones to price out, like my set rates for reels and for Instagram stories does change slightly with each brand and kind of what I, what their budget is and how big of a brand they are. Um, cause I do also like working with smaller brands because sometimes the underdog needs to get a little, you know, mm -hmm. small yeah. businesses do need, um, some publicity as well. But the harder stuff is like the live events because what they're asking for changes with each event. It can't just be like a, a set number, like, oh, for this, I need this. It's like, okay, do you want a reel ahead of time to promote it? Do you want a highlight reel? Do you want to set up stories while I'm there? Do you want, um, is this a half day of work? Is it a full day of work? Is it a half day of travel? Like Regan taught me to charge for my travel. So you charge for travel, but then you also charge for the time that you're sitting on the plane. Never would have thought to do that, you know? Yeah. Um, so like, kind of like gaining and then in the end offering. So one thing that we w would do is like, okay, you have a set amount of a la carte options for New York City and you send it to the brand and say it, we'll just choose the number, say it equals out to be like $10,000 and you could be like, but I'll do it for 7,000. So it makes it seem like you're, you know, <laughs> um, and then brands usually bite. They're like, okay, 7,000 in our budget. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Um, or they'll the older come back and they'll say, no, we, mm -hmm. we just don't have enough. Or can you come down to five? In which case I either take something off or I say, sure, I'll do it for five. So it's like, like I said, every single thing is so different. Um, I, people have, what are they called? Uh, media 
cards, media, kits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have one. Do you guys have one? I don't have one either. When I did a job with Kodiak, they were like, send us your media kit. I'm like, uh, no. I like Googled media kit. Yeah. 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 I watched yeah, more like, YouTube videos on what goes in a media kit. I've asked, I've, I've been asked for media kit twice and then I just, I just never, I just never responded. <laughs> like, okay, well, no. Cause if, if you want, if you want a media kit out of me, then you haven't been watching any of my stuff and you don't know who, you don't even know who I am because not, be, not like in a cocky way, but just like, I'm just, I just, I'm just not going to do it. I can't do it. Well, just, well, just don't respond. Well, d- yeah. just don't s- ignore the media kit part. So lately yeah. what I just do is um, I just give them the rates for the things that I'm most known for. So yeah. I give them an Instagram real rate of like what I think would be within their budget. Everyone says, ask them what their budget is. Yeah. I have gotten to a point where I don't even do that anymore. I just tell them what it is. And if it is so high that they can't imagine us finding a middle ground, then we move on. Um, if it's something that we can kind of play around with and I'm willing to, to lower for, um, then we keep the conversation open. Um, or if it's a brand that I absolutely love, I already use their product, I believe in their product, I spend money on their product, I'm willing to come down a lot, um, and I have, because I want people who follow me to know about this brand. You know, like I want people who I fo- who follow me to also benefit from hearing about something that I use. So I think also like another thing is kind of when you pitch yourself and you're like, listen, these are my set rates. Um, but I want you to know that like if you send me, we'll use Scratch for example, which I just did a, an ad for them. And I did an ad and then I threw in a, a few stories. and But I talk about them almost every day <laughs> um, for no charge, you know, and it's like, because I truly believe in their products. So it's like, I promise you, you will keep getting the publicity. I mean, they sent me a t-shirt that says scratch on it. I still wear the t-shirt because it's a great t-shirt. So it's like, uh, they will keep getting residual benefits from working with me. And I let them know, be like, if I love your product, it will keep coming up in conversation. I will tag you. I will put you in reels as kind of like my filler reels. so, and I think that brands have started to realize that, like, they see their product continuing to be in my reels, um, so that it wasn't just that one that I did, like, it keeps coming up. So, I kind of try and sell it that way, too. Um, but, yeah, I mean, in terms of, like, money, I, I've learned from Regan and Aaron, like, every X amount of followers, just keep increasing your price. Again, it's an arbitrary number. You can make it up. For me, it's been 50,000. So at 50,000, I upped my rate at 75, eight, 100,000. 100,000 apparently is like a really good one to go over. Okay. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, the, the rates that I started at of like 1,200, then 1,400, I think, around Christmas, I went up to $4,000 a reel and I almost threw up when I sent that email to Brooks. <laughs> and they were like, cool. And I was like, what? And then you're, then immediately you're like, I didn't charge enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. You should have said 20. <laughs> I mean, I mean, 40,000, 40,000 yeah. a reel. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, uh, I, I feel yeah. like then I've definitely not been charging enough after talking. No, you probably haven't. You. Most people just don't. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, because like I look at the math, like here's how I do my math. Like, is it an event that I really want to go to, and how expensive is it going to be to go there? So, mm-hmm. are they paying for me to fly and stay at a place? Um, that you know, I goes into my math as well. And then I'll, the rest of it is like, well, I know I'm going to be able to make a video out of it. I know that's going to do well, you know, personally, even though for, for yourself, yeah, yeah, for myself. Yeah. So there'll be revenue yeah. on that. So I like that goes into it for me. Um, and then I'm like, all right, well, how much money do I need on top of that? Like, you know, going with ASICs to Tokyo, I'm not going to really ask. I didn't ask for money on top of that. That's one heck of a trip, you know? Amazing. Um, yeah. But then other Absolutely. stuff, I'm just, I'm going to be like, uh, yeah, I'm going to need a little bit of money to go to, to that mm-hmm. one on top of that. And then I've had to walk away because people were like, mm, nope. And I was like, right. Okay. That's all right. But it's your, like, it's your time. It's like, yeah, of course I would love to go everywhere that people ask me to go, but you do have to put a price tag on your time and on what you're missing at home. And, and like also 
when you are on these trips, you are not responding to your email as fast. You're not <laughs> uploading as many videos. Like, yeah, you may get content out of it, but you're not in your regular routine of getting stuff up. And um, so, yeah, it's it's definitely like become really interesting just to like learn more about kind of how to sell myself and then like yeah. how much to ask for. And some things that I'm just reminded of is like these big brands have a lot of money. <laughs> and I like to just remind myself that I'm making commercials. Like yeah. influencers yeah. are very quick to, to downplay who they are and what they provide society and all this stuff. Like I'm just an influencer out here bebopping around and people love to share on influencers and that's all good. But at the end of the day, I like to think that no, I'm like storyboarding. I'm creating concepts and writing scripts and I'm making you a commercial. And yes, you may not view it as like a commercial that plays during the Super Bowl, but it's a commercial. And so you're not going to give me $500 for all of that time. Um, and you're not going to pay me in product. I, will, I refuse to work for product. And so I actually don't even accept, I, t I tend to not accept stuff at all. And it's mostly just because I have a tiny house. <laughs> I have a tiny, tiny house and I don't need more stuff. But a lot of brands are very sweet and they're like, we don't expect anything out of this, but we want to send you something. I still say no because I also have this guilt of like, well, you sent it to me. I have to post something about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Which is like, it's not true at all. Like you don't, you're not obligated yeah. to post at all. So, but I just say no, thank you. But if you want to work together, I'm prioritizing um, paid. Yeah paid work oh, and so nice and that phrase. Usually... i like that I, yeah. I have much to learn um, oh me too like, I'm, I'm taking notes this whole time yeah like <laughs> the, the kodiak job that i'll tell you about i don't think there's an nda on that one so i'll tell you about it um we'll see we'll see i'll, I'll let you know stay tuned for the next episode <laughs> of, here's how we got yeah. sued um, yeah uh, kapuzi behind bars yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like they reached out and they were like hey there's this promotion going on you know i love kodiak I've been, I've been mm -hmm. loving their product for a really long time. Me too. And so I was super excited about it. And I was like, you know, like, what's the budget for something like this? And they're like, hey, throw out a number. And I was like, I'll do a, I'll do a reel for $1,000. And they're like, uh, how about two? And I was like, like 200. And I was like, uh, wow. And I'm hearing in the back of my mind, like for me, my instant thing is just like, no, no thanks. That's cool. Yeah. I could walk away from that. Um, like the number of like emails that I'll have to do for that is not really worth my time. But I'm like, I don't know, I'll probably accidentally make a reel about Kodiak at some point anyway. So uh, like I might as well, and I'm hearing in the back of my my wife, my wife is very, very supportive. Like the one, like the only thing she ever says about like what I do and how much time it takes is that I'm very good at saying no to money. Because I just, I'm like, oh, this is a fun adventure. Let's go. I'm like, and she's yeah. like, did you ask for money? I'm like, I forgot. You know, and so she gets mad, which is very right. She's very smart. She's definitely like the, the responsible, dependable one in the relationship. So I'm hearing her voice in the back of my head. I'm like, all right, what? I, I mean, the, my, my literal response to the email was like, I like Kodiak. We'll do it. And so I did it for like $200. And I'm like, eh. and then I was like, as I'm doing it, I'm like, this is a lot of emails for two hundred dollars that I have to not not yeah. that like emails is that onerous, totally. but like the things that you have to respond to in those emails and yeah. like you know there's a lot of the hoops and stuff and it's just like I, I forget who I was listening to but it was just like I think it might have been like Colin and Samir they were like you know we like to do deals that are over multiple instances rather than one instance because like setting up a six in like levels of engagement deal takes as much legwork as a one engagement deal. So we don't do it's small true. deals, you know? So I'm just like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I got to figure this out. I got to get the problem is though. So a lot of, and I know that we're like skyrocketing into like long form podcasts here <laughs> where this is going to be like a three hour episode. Yeah. Um, but like early on, I was like, wow, it would be so incredible just to lock in one brand, right? So like there are some runners that are like influencers that are just locked into one exclusive brand. And then I think about what that would, ha what number that would have to be yeah. in order to lock me in. And it would have to be something outrageous, Crazy. which I don't even think I could ever ask for with a straight face, right? <laughs> like It would be higher than like what the pros get paid. So like, of course, they're not going to pay me for it, right? So uh, of course, that hasn't happened. And, and I'm still bopping around to all these different run brands. But it's it is really interesting just to like, 
the, the whole game, the whole game is very, very interesting. Uh, and we'll see how it evolves because in the world of marketing, it's still relatively new. And so they're trying to figure it out even on their brand end. And when you said don't, don't accept um, product for, for payment. So like in the beginning of, cause in the beginning of like my journey, like that's like, that's when I, when I, when I was like, one day I'm going to get shoes from a brand, you know, like that was like, right. first, that was the that big was goal. Like yeah. thing. And then I started getting shoes from, from brands. And then I started realizing that like brands will try to use like that as let's do something together. And in the beginning, like it was kind of more like I had some people like, you know, I, I you know, talked to Mike a couple different times and a few other people that have been around the industry long enough. Um, and they're like, yeah, don't take that as payment though. Like, that's fine. Like take, get the shoes, do all the stuff, but then also, um, figure out a way to, to, to move your thing forward. And so like, sometimes I would take, you know, like on purpose, I would say, yeah, sure. I'll make, I'll do these things or, or send me some shoes and I'll do these things. Like I would pitch the brand on sending, send me like this many of these or whatever, and I'll be able to make some content out of it. And it was always with like with the intention of like the possibility, like with the opportunity, like what could I make out of this moment? Um, and then would it help build, would it give me some more credibility? Would it do blah, blah, blah? And that kind of went into like to that. But then as I started to grow, which which was like um, tough to like realize it's happening until like maybe you go to like a, a Boston or like a New York and then you realize like, oh, crap, like we're like we're moving here like there's people that, yeah. that like that are like into the into the vibe then it's like okay well then i started to a ask for money or ask people what what is your budget because they'd say how much you want to charge for this i'd be like i'd be scared to say a number so i'd be like um what's your what's your budget and a lot of times they'll give you a number like that's higher than the number that you would have you would have asked for Totally. And then I'll say, sure, sure, that's fine. <laughs> and I'll try to make it, <laughs> make good, it sound like good. it wasn't just three times more than I was going to ask. Um, and like you said, like it's it's just it's I'm in that position now where it's like some like I'm going to I'm going to New York City um, with five other people. Like I'm bringing five people with me, um, and it's it was, it's with New Balance. We're calling we got it's called the PR Project Never Sleeps. That that whole this whole thing, and because of that opportunity, and I was they were able to let me bring five of my friends um i was like that's a, that's a this is the opportunity like that's enough that's cool great as long as we we get there everything's paid for you know other than that i i don't need anything extra because this is such a great opportunity for not from just for me but for my friends so there is some nuance to it because if they were like hey we want, we want just you to come out and we want you to do these this many reels leading up to it. we want you to train for three months and we want you to blah 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 um, then there'd be a number because it's like, oh, it's just me, one flight, one hotel, let's, you know, something else, we have to make this more worth it. But I think that there's so many people probably listening, there's not too many people listening to this that have 140,000 followers. But like, it's like, you sometimes you have to take, you have to think about like what the opportunity is for you. And it may not, on paper, it may not be like, wow, that was a good deal for you. But like what Mike's saying is like, you know, 200 bucks, right? But like, he's like, I like this. I want to do it. It'll make you feel right. good. Sometimes you have to take that into consideration of like, will you walk away from this deal and see this video later and be okay with it still? You know, like, cause they're going to use the real, they're going to they post are. it, they're going to make money off of it. And if you're going to look at that in six months and maybe see it pop up in a random ad and you're not it doesn't make you feel good that you only got paid 50 bucks in six pairs of shoes, then maybe you shouldn't do it. You know what I mean? Like you have to decide like what you're okay with. Yeah. I, I, I have an example of that. I'm going to Banff uh, in October and it's with this friend company and with on the scale of like budgets, it's on the lower end. And I was like, I don't care. Mm. We're going to, I just want my sons and my husband to come because Banff is one of the most beautiful places in the world. My kids, I would love to show it to them. So whatever it takes. So like we bought like the cheapest tickets on WestJet. And then I was like, I don't care where we stay. I don't care. I just want it to kind of come close to, to zeroing out, you know? Mm. Um, and that to me is 1000% worth it. Plus I get to interact with this community in Calgary that I otherwise would not have. So there's like all these gains and it's no, it's not a $10,000 gig, but mm -hmm. that's quite all right. Like 
th- those bigger budgets are saved for the majors anyways. So like, I don't know the, these small races that reach out all the time and they're like, I can give you a bib. I'm like, I can't, yeah. I can't fly to Kansas for a bib. Um, as much as I would love to, but I'm tied down at home. So like some things do have to have a paycheck attached to it, unfortunately, which yeah sucks too because these races are small and they don't have huge budgets so it's it's tough you gotta you gotta have to kind of like balance it out and also figure out where you want to give back to the run community and if it's drawing attention to a certain race in a certain area that you love and you'll do it for free or you'll do it for for two dollars you know um i'm down for that too yeah i just did a job for a bib it was yeah yeah a yeah, lot yeah. Of work. I had to fly. Yeah. I had to fly. <laughs> so fortunately, a friend let me stay at their house. I did a live stream live, uh, and then we made a video about the race and reels about. The, it was a lot of work. It was. I I knew about it before yeah. beforehand. Yeah. And that he that it, like this whole dynamic and so like watching you <laughs> go through the weekend, I was like, oh. <laughs> but I, I, I'm you know I I using it as an investment with the relationship with the brand because i want which is smart. i want which is i'm going to ask for something bigger later yeah so that's kind of how i see it but but yeah like but you win but it we talked like about, uh, this we talked about know, it before I know, it hurts, <laughs> it hurts. Yeah, and, I mean, and also you're on these you're on these trips with other creators and you're like how much you're getting paid yeah. how much yeah, yeah, you yeah. getting paid yeah. for this well here's yeah. the thing not a lot of other creators were there a lot of people were like hey i might go to that too and i was like and then I would follow up with them three weeks later, and they were like, uh, no, they weren't going to offer anything, so I didn't go. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, cool, cool. I, I'm and, going. And, but- and then every, and, well, everybody probably watched that, that weekend go down, and it was like, oh, man, he got paid, you know? But everyone but, probably uh, thought that I'm the reason why they, they got off the yeah, you're the reason why no one got, paid. got a bib. Oh. Yeah, and then, but like that's smart though because like because we talked about it before, and you're like, this is why I think I'm going to do it, and and it's like whatever you're doing, if you're doing it with some like intention of building something, or it'll it'll it's an opportunity that could help you build, yeah. um, then just as long as it's thought out, then then do it, and as long as you feel good about it, then just do it, you know. And um, I think that's just like the best way to go because whether. You know, if if you don't feel comfortable like leaving your house for like seven days to go, you know, for the, to this one place for just a bib and you know maybe a f- one flight, then you you need to ask for more money. That's going to make you feel good, you know. And yeah. uh, I think that's like you just have to find that balance of like, what are you going to get out of this, and will you be happy with it later? Yeah, I I definitely yeah. the I de- definitely feel like I got taken advantage of a little bit. Um, but you crushed that weekend. Though. I, I feel like I did a good job. I do a good it, job bro. no matter what. Well, you know, or I try to do a good job no matter what. But I, here's like the other way is like I've been trying to develop like as like I guess like as a product, um, non-running related meetups because we do like shakeout runs, but not everyone wants to go to the shakeout run or maybe they have a coach and they're doing a shakeout run with their coach for that weekend. You know, maybe there's a group run that they would re- they need to go to instead. And so I'm trying to work out like some other non-related ways we can meet. And I feel like the live stream live is a product that I feel like I need more help, like kind of like developing. And, and the brand did pay for like the locate or secure the location. And there was refreshments, beverages, food, you know, and they rented out the sound system and stuff. So it's not like they did nothing. They did a lot. They did, they did help. But like in terms of like cash, there was, like negative cash but Laura's uh, like can we just end this call so we could talk about this (laughs) but um but here's here's the punchline though um i just pitched like another brand yesterday like hey i want to do this in new york i just did it in this other city here's what we had here's what it looked like you know so i'm like you know i'm calling considering it in my mind like product development expenses yeah, yeah, you got a yeah. trial run and yeah. you got to show off the numbers yeah. and how successful it yeah. was. The yeah. Intention. All the intention is there, yeah. yeah. But yeah. All right. Should we end this here so that I could like really spill the tea? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's talk about this. <laughs> so we'll, we'll hit the stop button and then we can really talk about it. And then yeah, no, really though. Thank, <laughs> thanks so much, Laura, for like. So I, I, I had a, there's a successful DM to Laura. I DM Laura. She answered, which is great. Thank you so much for for answering. Hey, I our answer DM. almost all my DMs. Okay. I try very hard. All right, well, but I'm gonna, especially I'm gonna from you guys. Account. I mean, come on. I'm gonna do a ghost account. I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a ghost account and see how <laughs> see, I can get the answer. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for being on on this podcast. 
uh, we are we're happy to have you, and we love seeing like all the success and getting to meet you in person. You like literally are like as you're you are as funny in person as you are on on camera. So <laughs> we, we appreciate guys. it. Thanks, guys. Oh shucks, it was really fun. <laughs>